Hello folks, welcome to Thursday, April the 15th Market Commentary. I'm Eric Wilkinson with Pro Trader Strategies and yes, you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from mainstream media where I talk about the economic data, the geopolitical environment, how that comes in to impact the markets with some of my market analysis. I do the same thing for you folks in these daily market commentaries, but I also talk about my option strategies that I'm implementing into my portfolio. And we've streamlined the process for you folks to find the optimal option strategy for any given assumption in my courses that I do. Uh, and right now we're on the swing trade course. And we're gonna be talking about swing trade setups and how to find the best strategy. If we have a bullish assumption, we aren't just picking a long call as a default here. No, what we do is we look at what's going on with the pricing and determine whether or not it's cheap or expensive in those, for those options. That ultimately determines what strategy we're gonna be using. And I talk about how to break that down into very simple, easy to spot strike locations for any given uh, strategy. So check those out. All right, so we got a lot to go over. Let's get on with the economic data across the pond. Not really a whole lot uh, going on there, but here in the United States, we got a ton of economic data. So we got the core retail sales, probably the more important at, uh, data point today. Core retail sales is going to strip out some of the more volatile aspects like vol uh, <laughs> automobiles. That came in at 8.4%, expected to be 5.1%, and a revision to last month's number, albeit only slightly. That headline number is a home run there. And then we add back in those automobiles, we get our regular retail sales number. That came in at 9.8%. So cars are moving as well as uh, other retail uh, purchases. So everything doing very well. Probably a lot to do with some of those stimulus checks coming through. That's kind of ramping this stuff up. But retail sales coming in at 9.8%, expected to be 5.8%, and a slight revision to last month's number uh, as well. We got the Philly Fed manufacturing. These numbers have been coming in better than expected, and this one does not disappoint, coming in at 50.2, expected to be 51.0. Then we got unemployment claims, 576,000, expected to be 703,000, lower than the expected, meaning people are probably having a job if they're looking for a job. Now, another thing is, uh, we aren't seeing these claims ramp up based on the fact that they don't want to work and they just want unemployment either. So uh, we're seeing people either fall off that unemployment number or have found a job. And then we got the Empire State Manufacturing Index, kind of like that Philly Fed number, coming in at 26.3, better than the expected 19.3. So all of those numbers better than expected. Now we did get capacity utilization coming off just a little bit, coming in at 74.4, expected to be 75.6, and industrial production coming in at 1.4%, expected to be 2.4%. So we're seeing those two data points come off just a little bit, while the rest of the equity, or the uh, rest of the economic data points coming in better than expected. Uh, business inventories in line with expectations there. Uh, National Association of Home Builders Index coming in at 83. Anything above 50 is, is, is positive. So nicely uh, coming out at 83. Slightly missing on the 84 expected, but really not much of a miss. The real miss was on forward, uh, uh, forward looking uh, with these guys, and they are worried about higher interest rates, higher lumber prices, Lumber prices just reached another all-time high. So the cost of building these houses is causing these builders a little bit of angst because they have to put up a lot of money to build a house and they're expecting that these house prices will stay or remain the same. Now, if they see these interest rates start to rise, well, that means people might hold back on buying a house. That's where the rub is with the National Host, uh, Association of Home Builders uh, Housing Market Index. That is the home builders, and they are concerned about the prices of uh, the uh, lumber and other materials going into this house. The price of the house is rising. We're seeing the median house prices go up as well, but how long is that sustainable? When we see interest rates rise, we start to see some kinks in that armor of higher home prices. All right, we also have a couple of uh, Fed governors speaking today, likely not to talk about Fed policy. I believe they are in lockdown now at this point. Um, for the foreseeable future, or at least for the next two weeks, we should say, until the FOMC meeting. All right, let's get on to the markets. We've got crude oil kind of trying to stay up here. 
Clawing higher, manufacturing numbers very strong today. We should see crude oil react. There's demand for crude oil. We saw that as well with the drawdown uh, um, last time, or uh, Wednesday. So crude oil is still moving higher. Gold making a nice spike, 35 or $30 higher here above the trend channel and the 50-day simple moving average. Those were resistances that we were finding as we were trying to peel through this. We finally popped above that today. Now it seems like off to the races for a little bit. Now, I wasn't expecting us to get back into that 18, 1900 handle with the strengthening of the dollar. But, you know, we talk about how the markets are going to try and hurt as many people as possible, as often as possible. Well, this could be one of those situations where we're seeing that market really start to turn around and push to the upside as the shorts have been piling in. Bitcoin unchanged for the most part. Bonds up two points on the day. Yes, 1.31 is 31 bit at even, one tick away from a full two point higher. Up against right now that two, uh, that sorry, 50 day simple moving average that will act as resistance um, as we're trying to peel through that. Will we get above it? I think that this is another one of those situations where we're seeing higher uh, or better than expected economic data points that would expect. Uh, lead us to believe that interest rates should start creeping higher, right? If interest rates are going higher, that means our bonds are going down. Keep in mind, it is that simple uh, uh, little thing that we talk about with the, um, where it looks like a teeter-totter, right? And um, does this not want to open or I can't find it? Oh, there it is. It's way over here. Sorry, folks. Uh, it's hidden behind. Um, all right, so what we're talking about with the teeter-totter effect with interest rate, or so we, right now we have price going higher, right? So if price is going higher here to the upside, well, if you make it look like a teeter-totter, that means that interest rates are going down, all right? So as price goes higher, interest rates are going down. We are right up against this simple 50-day uh, simple moving average right here. We'll need to get above that to get any type of upward momentum. It could just be a blip right now where we're trying to put the thumb screws on some people. Uh, we have heard the Fed say they're not going to raise interest rates anytime soon, but with this economic data that we've been getting, higher than uh, expected inflation, not terribly hot, but it's coming in a little bit hotter than expected, and the manufacturing sector, which could lead to more demand for uh, crude oil. All of those things mean that economy is doing well, interest rates should start moving higher, not lower. Uh, but we're seeing this pinch happen today. All right, VIX is in slightly negative territory here. We were making a push to the upside. But I think people are starting to add or get a little bit nervous about these toppy areas where we're seeing volatility start to creep back into these markets despite the fact that we're making moves to the upside. You can see the NASDAQ looking to print a new all-time high trying to go for that 1400 again today, uh, up a cup, uh, quite nicely there. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average making a new all-time high here, up 275 points on the day, up against that Fibonacci there. Keep your eye on that. That's going to act as overhead resistance. And the E-mini S&Ps, all of these charts were setting up yesterday like if we you know, settled much lower, that was going to be a confirmation. But we can see that if we zoom in on this trade here, we can see that this pattern did not get confirmed yesterday. This would have been the day to confirm. We would have had to have printed in and settled below the previous day's low, which would have been there right around 4101. So if it would have settled 4101 even, that would have made, or, or lower, that would have made a confirmation as a top. Well, we didn't get that. It was pretty much an inside day. Today, popping to the upside, uh, not giving us any confirmation there whatsoever. And as you can see, price continuing to be accepted at higher levels here. Now, having said all of that, we're looking at a couple of trades today for our webinar, and it is going to be on the poor man's covered call. Now, we saw Goldman Sachs come out with better than expected earnings. I mean, they doubled it. They knocked it out of the park. I think they were expecting $9 or something and came in at around $18. So really doing well there. Today, a bit of consolidation. Yes, we are positive, but it is still more of a consolidating uh, type of pattern here. I think the banks are going to do well, especially if we start seeing interest rates moving higher uh, in um, 
2022 or so. So anyway, we're looking at doing a swing trade setup around this. And I'm going to talk about how to do a poor man's covered call. It is going to be like doing a long trade uh, if you got into the stock and we do a covered call against it to try and lower our basis. I'll show you how we limit our risk to the downside with this trade, making it more advantageous for any trader out there than going out and just buying stocks. So I'll show you how to do this trade in the webinar today. So please check that out. And our disclaimer, take a moment to go over our disclaimer as we're an educational company, folks. We're not trying to get you guys to do these trades that I'm doing. I'm using them as examples, real life examples that you can uh, take home, dissect, and then start implementing these strategies in your own uh, portfolio. All right. According to these guidelines that we've set up for you. All right, that's all I got. I'll see you later on today at the webinar. So check that out for swing trade setups. If you can't take that, take it easy.